Hey everybody, Troa here, back for another episode of Elite Dangerous, and in this episode I'm going to go ahead and continue directly where I left off in the previous episode. And in the previous episode, if you had not watched it, I spent a considerable amount of time going ahead and getting this cutter modified. Now, it took a long, long time, and one of the, one of the takeaways I had from that is just how much time and effort and grinding it's going to take to get a ship, a large ship, to the point where you're going to be able to see it in this video. Now, and I mean a considerable amount of time and effort. We're talking months, at very, very least, weeks worth of grinding and gathering all the requisite materials needed to modify a ship to this degree. So I want to go ahead and get that right, cleared up right away, that the ship that you're going to be seeing here would equate to months of grinding. Okay, now because we're in the beta and everything cost a fish, it still took me several hours just to modify the ship, but every time I would go back and get more fish, that would equate to hours of work. And my suggestion for that was to implement a an actual market for all of the micro and macro resources that would be required to do all of these modifications, and to incorporate it within the black market as a means to both stimulate the um, scavenger profession, the surface mining profession, which I didn't think talk about in that video, but it's also relevant, piracy, because these things would be, I, in my opinion, I would want them to be ludicrously expensive, so that no matter what happened, you would require a grind, whether it be for credits or for finding the materials themselves, but it would be an end game activity if you chose to purchase them. But it would also be a way to circumvent the grind, which I believe is important. Because the one problem I see with a, with this patch, and engineers in general, is that it's adding so much of a grind to the game. And I believe there needs to be a way around it, so that it doesn't make it a sore note in the game's history, rather to create it as a very positive one. And in this case... Like I said, it would help surface mining, it would help scavenging, it would help smuggling if you could actually buy and sell these things, and move them to black markets, and piracy as well. It would give pirates a very tangible uh, product to take, because it doesn't take up much cargo space, if at all, it, depending on how they implemented it, of course. Pirate ships generally don't have a lot of cargo because they're also combat ships. They have this weird mixture. So it would be a huge buff to piracy. It would be a huge buff to smuggling if there was an actual full-on market for it. And it would be a huge buff to scavenging, and it would create a profession of surface mining, where you could go out and find all the materials and sell them at a market and have that be a complete gameplay option that is now only for personal reasons and no monetary ones whatsoever. So I think it would be a huge boon to the game to have all the micro and macro resources be something that you could find and sell or smuggle or pirate and circumvent this grind that is going to be introduced with the update. I think that is the most elegant, long-term solution to the only thing I can find wrong with engineers so far. And I am very critical. So that, that said, massive, massive thing. Now, the other thing that has been brought up is uh, we are now in beta 4. And beta 4 went ahead and changed a couple of things, and we're also going to be able to see that today as well. Notably, the changes to, um, to A turrets. So turrets now have a better fire rate and damage rate to bring them more in line with gimbaled and uh, fixed weapons. So they're in a lot, they, they made turrets stronger. So I already modded them to basically get around that limitation. So they're, they're going to be even better now. And I, I'm very excited about that because I want to like turrets, but I can't <laughs> because they suck. So let's see if they still suck. And um, because, you know, that was another point. If turrets are actually good, then... It might make my argument that this ship needs to be more maneuverable less of a less of a problem. So we'll see. We'll see. I have four turrets on this ship and only three weapons that are gimbaled. The majority of the turret the, the majority of the weapons on this ship are turreted. The other thing that is notable about beta four, uh, at least 
pertaining to the episode today, is that um, the changes to AI were implemented, where they are going to be more aggressive and they're going to run less. So we're going to go ahead and change that. But to go ahead and start, I want to show you guys something. I'm going to go ahead and look through the galaxy map and find a war zone that I can get into. Now, I had to do this to actually go to the engineer's base. And by the way, you need to actually de deliver the combat bonds to the engineer, not where you get them. And you can only donate up to a thousand. Uh, well, at least that's what it was for the beta. So however many he requires, that's how much you're actually going to have to deliver to him. All the rest go unclaimed. You donate them to him. Oh, they changed a little icon here. But, this is what's important here. Filters. Now, if we go into here, and let's see here... What is it? What is it now? Filters. Here we go. State. If we go into the state, and we do it... Oh, they added the retreat. Thank you. Okay, and you go into war. And war alone... They might have fixed this, because when I did it, I kept going to places that were in quote-unquote war, and were not in a state of war. They were in retreat or some other state that was clearly not war, because there were no conflict zones and everybody was off. But this, if it works properly now, is probably one of the biggest things that I've been waiting for in this game in a long time. It didn't work before 100% of the time. It worked kind of. So let's see if it actually works now. So we're going to go ahead and plot a route. And I'm going to go over here and it says state of war. Let's see if it is. And if it is, we'll start testing this ship. check if this place is actually in a state of war. None. Nope, still broken. So one thing I want to say before we get to the conflict zone is when the AI was running away, I would notice that in conflict zones, all of, I would be in the center of the conflict zone, right? In the direct center of the conflict zone. And there would be nobody there because they have, were all chasing each other off in every direction. So, you know, beyond the fact that it was annoying to me, and beyond the fact that some people might, you know, have thought, well, you know, that's a good thing. The fact of the matter is it was completely breaking conflict zones. Oh, I can boost turn to keep up with him. I couldn't do that before. Wait, let's see here. Yeah, you can get materials here. Oh, man. Okay, so war zones are going to be really good places to find materials. Good to know. Flight assist off. Flight 
Yeah, this feels a lot better. This feels a lot better. A lot better. Yeah, this is a massive improvement. There is no way I would be able to do that in the old cutter. This feels a lot better. She really toned down the uh, running mechanic. Target destroyed. This feels so much better. Combat is a lot more fun. The turrets seem a lot better. Oh, they have little icons under their ship now on the left hologram. Tells me that they're heating up. That they're I don't know what those I don't know what they mean. I know one is obviously heat. And the long range turrets are doing their job. Oh, this is good, guys. This is good. Alright, let's see if I can get one of these guys. Oh, this this feels so much better. Although I'm not sure about the AI. I I think I'm in a much too powerful of a ship to really say. And they have a lot of distractions besides me. Yeah, I can orbit a lot easier, makes zoom and boom a lot, a lot better. Because I can do this. And then come right back. Yeah, this is a lot better. Yeah, this is much nicer. Okay, this guy's a lot more aggressive. Let's do some zoom and boom. Took 
compensate for his increased maneuverability. It works. Yeah, this is so much nicer. Yeah. The cutter actually feels like a warship right now. I don't know how it does in PvP though. That would be interesting. It did alright before, but that was really only because it could take a beating. good. This is good, guys. This is really good. Yeah, this is so much better. Do you have any idea how long it took me to get a conflict, uh, combat bond at all to get into that um, engineer's base? It took forever. This is so much better. Target shields offline. Flight assist on. And I can go ahead and gain distance and flip this thing around. It allows me to get further far enough away with how much faster I am. Warning. 
I might actually need to outfit one of these for a combat instead of keeping it forever as a trader. Maybe a little too aggressive on your part, Cobra. Now we're under heavy attack. So let's see if I can defend myself. Now if they have a target, they will fire. I'm outnumbered. Python. Try a shield cell bank while we're at it. Warning. 
that didn't do anything to increase my shields. <laughs> Oops, I shouldn't have boosted. Yeah, guys, this this feels awesome. Oh, one of my multi cannons is out of ammo. Wow, I'm out of ammo. I've never been out of ammo in a cutter before. Let's see, 41% if I turn these off. There is no way the thrusters on this ship, after I've modded it with a dirty drive, only produces 3% of heat. It's a lot easier to line up now, too. A lot easier to land. Maintain hard heading until further instruction. That was a lot easier to land. Like night and day difference. Let's see how many combat bonds we got. Did a fair chunk of damage to myself. Restock. 
664,000, and I didn't have to leave. Now it's just running out of ammo. That's comparable. That's actually comparable. That's pretty good. I have to say, number one, turrets didn't feel completely useless. That's first and foremost. The turrets actually felt like they were doing a fair amount of damage. And they were useful in the war zone. This is a weird feeling, guys. But turrets weren't bad. And as far as the ship, the cutter, yeah, I still think it needs a slight, slight buff to its pitch rate. Just its pitch rate. And I think it still needs the distributor buff, right? But otherwise, it is acceptable. I mean, it's not where I would expect it to be if I had spent the months of grinding to get it here. You know what I mean? Like, this feels where it should be lightly modified. Right? Lightly modified. Or medium modifications. Just a little... I mean, I'm talking seconds. Shave seconds. Maybe two seconds off of its pitch rate. And it is glorious. I mean, we're talking very minimal amounts here. Right? For it to feel right. But it feels good. It feels a lot better than it used to. So, I mean, monumentally... Monumentally better. It would take months of work to get all of these upgrades. But, I mean, if you did it selectively, and again, as, you know, fighting NPCs, I would not take this thing anywhere near a player without making sure your shields and your shield boosters are all up to, up to par. But otherwise, if you just went for the thrusters, and maybe a couple boosters, and of course your power uh, power plant. I'd say this would be a fairly good ship, and you kept it light, like you didn't add armor to it or any hull reinforcement. You could get a lot out of it. I'm very happy right now. Like, legitimately, I'm very happy right now. It needs just a little bit more love to make it perfect. But is it acceptable and good in the meantime? Yeah. Yeah. It is. As far as the shield generator goes, I don't think I would go with a prismatic or a standard generator on this thing. I mean, you could. If you went with a prismatic, I'd just get rid of the shield cell banks. They didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they did something, but you couldn't tell. It's kind of insane, and the and the the bi-weave shield would have the stronger regeneration rate outside of combat, and if they went down, depending on who or what you're fighting. The multi cannons, mwah, magnifique. The boosters, man, the shields on this thing must be massive. Let's let's check that really fast. All right, let us see over here. Wow, shields five thousand five hundred. Holy moly. And that's because I lighten them. You gotta remember, I purposefully made my shields weaker than they could be. They're not prismatics, first of all. And I did the lightning modification on them, which made it to where they weren't as strong. Where I, when as I could have made them stronger. And they're still at five and a half thousand. Very good. But guys, there is one thing that I am excited to test. And it turns out, there is a weapon special effect for torpedoes. That when they damage the shields, they damage the shield generator directly. Which means you can have thousands of shields and have them go down because your shield malfunctioned or went out completely. So even though you can get this thing with OP amounts of shields, realize that there is a counter for it. And that is scary. Okay, and one more thing, guys. If I modify my power plant 
to put out more power, the integrity goes down, which is basically how much hit points my power plant has. So this ship, with as strong a shields and as strong a hull and everything else, it can be considerably weak. It, I mean, it can be significantly weaker than you would imagine it to be if somebody comes along with the perfect combination where they bypass your shields, take out your shield generator, and then hit your power plant. Whoa. Guys, that's scary to think. Because it only has 109 health. It's a brave new world. In fact, I would say it is imperative. Imperative, actually. That if you fly a cutter, that you get one of these. So, on top of that, guys, uh, the only other thing that I can think of is getting explosive resistance to negate those new torpedoes. But we're going to have to see what those are all about in a future episode. Not necessarily the next episode, but in a future one, I'm going to go all out testing those missiles. And they've done a lot of other changes to the game in Beta 4, so I'm going to have to check all this stuff out. There's so much to look at in this update, guys. Absolutely so much. And I can't spend all the, day, all, all the time on the cutter as much as I would love to. I also want to check out the Corvette, uh, because that's another one of my favorite ships. So I want to see how good it is as well. I still think it needs... I mean, we're talking a little bit of work. Just a little bit more. And it's perfect. Same class power distributor, and we're talking seconds difference on its pitch rate. And it's perfect. It's done. It's magnifique. But, again, to be fair, I have yet to compare this against the Corvette or the Anaconda when modded. It runs with them now, but I wonder how, how it does against modified versions of them. Alright guys, well I'll catch you later. Have a good one, and in the meantime... Peace out. All of them. We are ready to enter the atmosphere. Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs>